uh, today's session is going to be on general recommendations for RV quantification. So in, in clinical studies, uh, you need to do a comprehensive evaluation. And when you're looking at the, the right side of the heart, uh, you should look at the right ventricle and um, you should uh, incorporate some method of, of um, doing right, uh, right, especially right ventricle systolic function. And the current recommendation for that is, is, is at least do two methods to evaluate RV systolic function. And we, we'll do the TAPSI and we do um, the, the RV S prime. So we look into that now. So when when we when we are looking at the right side, we need to get images um, dedicated to, to to the right side. So we talk about a RV or a right-sided focus view. So parameters that can be measured include you can look at the the right vent the right ventricle, and then we talk about you can measure the right ventricle to get uh, size, volume, and systolic function. And you can look at the right atrium to get size. Um, again, when you look at the RV, you want to look at the RV systolic function. Um, and there's a number of methods that we use to evaluate RV systolic function, the fractional area change. Um, we can do TAPSI. And we can do Doppler tissue image derived tricuspid tricos lateral annular systolic velocity, um, the so called RVS prime. And as we mentioned, TAPSI, which is tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion. You can also look at RIMP, and we went over that. A few weeks ago, that's the right ventricular index of myocardial performance, RIMP. Um, we would normally look at the RV systolic pressure, and we calculate that by looking at the TR regurgitant jet. And we, we get the gradient by 4V squared, where V is the velocity. And then we estimate the right atrial pr pressure based on the um, inferior vena cava. So these are routine stuff that you guys have been doing. When um, feasible, additional parameters such as RV volumes and ejection fractions. We can also do RV ejection fraction. Um, so if you're in an institution that can do RV ejection fraction um, using three-dimensional echo, of course, uh, then you can do that. It's not, it's not a, a routine uh, test that we do. So the current, the current, um, the current uh, recommend, well, the TAPSI, the current value for TAPSI, and this has changed over the years, Tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion. You have to know how to do it. So we have our four chamber view. You put the cursor across the lateral tricuspid annular plane, and it's an M mode measurement. It's abnormal if it's less than 17. So 17 and above is normal. <clears throat> so <clears throat> So that would be one of the routine studies that we, you know, we do to evaluate um, RV function. And basically, what we're looking at is how much displacement the tricuspid annular plane, which is really the base of the RV, how much excursion you get in systole and it should be greater than 17 millimeters. 
Then we have the pulse Doppler S wave. It's basically done the same way. The cursor is across the, the lateral um, uh, tricuspid annulus, but this time you're going to press your Doppler, not M mode. Um, it's not an M mode measurement, it's a, it's a uh, uh, tissue Doppler uh, measurement. And it's abnormal if it's less than 9.5. Uh, centimeters per second. It should be 9.5 or greater. Okay. So I would recommend when you're doing your routine study, do at least these two. You know, do TAPSI and the pulse Doppler uh, S wave. Because, you know, you do your TAPSI and then you want to take your M mode button off, then you can put your Doppler uh, button on and you get, you know, so you have two methods to evaluate the RV systolic function. Um, you, you know, fractional area change is not a routine measure, it can be done. Uh, it's abnormal if it's less than 35%, so it should be 35 or greater percent. Um, you can do strain on the RV free wall. It's not routinely done. Um, you can do RV uh, EF using three-dimensional echo, and it's abnormal if the ejection fraction is less than 45%. So if you're going to do ejection fraction, it's best to do use your 3D echo, and it should be 45 or greater percent um so those are the sort of routine there are other uh tools you can use to evaluate the rv function but they're not routinely done all right so what about left atrium uh measurements of the left atrium this is crucial this is crucial and i would you know advise everybody to learn the, 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 the methods, the recommended method to evaluate the left atrium. Um, so transthoracic echo is the recommended approach for assessing the left atrial size, okay? Um, so it's not T's, it's transthoracic echo. The left atrial size should be measured at the end of LV systole. So the end of LV systole, that's when you're going to measure left atrial uh, size. When the left atrium is at its greatest dimension, and while acquiring uh, images to measure left atrial size and volumes, you should be careful not to, to foreshorten the left atrium. You can foreshorten left atrium. So you want the maximum size. Um, uh, the most widely used linear dimension. So you can you can do linear dimension. Um, the 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 most widely used linear dimension is the anterior posterior measurement in the parasternal long axis view, and you can use your M mode as well as uh, your two dimensional echo. Two-dimensional echo is uh, the, the 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 better uh, of the two, and we we will just go over and show you how that's done. But uh, again, it's measured in uh, end systole when the left atrium is at its greatest dimension. Um, we 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 used to use this quite extensively. Um, but what we have realized is it's not a true, uh, it's not representative of, a, of, of an accurate uh, picture of the left atrial size. So left atrial volume assessment is a recommended approach. And the ease with which left atrial volumes can be obtained in clinical practice in conjunction 
with the, exist, uh, the existing robust literature, because we have a lot of uh, information on it. Uh, it, it, it renders evaluating left atrial area unnecessary. So you have to do left atrial volumes. So how do we uh, look at uh, the volume measurements of the left atrium? So when assessing the left atrial size um, and remodeling, the measurement of left atrial volume is recommended, okay? Evaluation of the volume take into account the alteration in chamber size in all direction. So when you do uh, just linear measurement, it does not look at the, the, the change in the left atrial chamber in all directions. So it's not an accurate assessment of left atrial size. Uh, left atrial volume has been shown to be a powerful prognostic variable in a variety of cardiac disease states. So you know, if you if you look at you know something like a, a, a diastolic dysfunction, diastolic dysfunction is going to put pressure in the left atrium, and the left atrial size is going to increase. So, looking at left atrial volume or left atrial size gives you a lot of. Uh, information about the underlying cardiac pathology and also help in, ter in terms of pro uh, prognostication. So the recommended evaluation for left atrial size is left atrial volume. Okay, so you have to, so two-dimensional echocardiographic left atrial volumes are typically smaller than those reported for compute, computed tom uh, tomography or, or cardiac MR. So you know that you know, cardiac MR at least is superior to echo in terms of you know, volume measurements, but this, this is an echo course, so we, we, we're gonna stick with echo. Um, so measurements of left atrial volumes are important because they reflect the burden and chronicity of elevated LV filling pressures. So if the left atrium is under pressure for a long period of time, it's going to increase in size. As opposed to an acute event, it's not going to increase the, the size uh, at, at that point in time, it's going to take time. So it's a it's a strong predictor of outcomes, and it also tell you about chronicity of the elevated filling pressures. So left atrial volume is very very important. There are different methods that exist for measuring left atrial volume. Although um, there there are some linear measurements that have been used, the, the relative inaccuracy of these linear measurements uh, limit this method. Left atrial volume should be measured using the same approach as looking at left ventricular volumes. And we're talking about the disk summation um, method. So the, the, the same approach, the disk summation method. All right, so remember that because this is uh, an update from the, the O5 guidelines, okay? So what you do, the left atrial and the cardiac border should be traced in both the apical four and two chamber view. Alternatively, a biplane calculation can be performed using uh, the area and length. Um, so you 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 can use the area and length um, method, but the, the recommended uh, is, is the disk summation, okay? Remember that. We used to use the area length method, although the area length method uh, still assumes an ellip ellipsoid uh, atrial shape, it has the advantage of reducing linear dimension to only two measurements, okay? But the correct method is the, the disk summation method, not the area length method. So 
left atrial size is dependent on gender. So when you see a reported left atrial uh, dimension, it should be you know, male or female. Um, however, the gender differences in left atrial size generally accounted for when adjusting for, bodies, uh, for body size. So and another important um, point is when you look at left atrial volume, it's not, not going to be just a volumetric measurement. It's always an index measurement, OK? So it has to be indexed. It has to be adjusted for the body surface area. Um, and just roughly speaking, the upper limit for the left atrial volume is about 34 ml per meter squared. Okay, previously it was 28. So you you, you know essentially you have to keep up with these um, the, the guidelines because you know 34 is now the upper limit, not 28. Okay, and um, most of the literature will you know do female male. Um, Analysis. Okay, so so when we talk about the internal, um, when we do the 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 anterior posterior measurement of the left atrium, so this is a M mode two dimensional guided M mode uh, measurement of the left atrium. So up top you have the two dimensional image. See your cursor is right here, and the cursor crosses all these structures. So it looks at the chest wall, the RV wall, the RV cavity, the, 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 the wall of the aorta. It goes through the aorta, and then it goes through the anterior and the posterior uh, left atrium, and it looks at the left atrial cavity. So these are the same structures in your hem mode, the chest wall, the RV wall, RV cavity. This is the wall of the aorta, the aortic valve is inside. And then this is the anterior wall of the uh, left atrium and where you have maximum separation you drop a perp perpendicular down to the posterior wall and then this is a measure of the um, left atrial dimension anterior posterior okay so the anterior posterior diameter of the left atrium can be measured in the parasternal long axis view perpendicular to the aortic root long axis and the measure at the level of the aortic sinuses remember that the measures at the level of the aortic sinuses by using the leading edge leading edge um, con convention so basically when when you look at your cursor your cursor is coming down here your cursor should cross the sinus okay so it should cross the sinus the the aortic uh, sinuses Okay, and that's when you that's where you're gonna come down. But they also say it should be perpendicular to the aortic root long axis, and the aortic root long axis um, sorry about that. The aortic root long axis I'm allowed to draw. Okay. All right. So let's draw. So this is the 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 aortic root is right there. So the long axis is gonna be a parallel line to the to the aortic root. So it should be this should be a straight line. Okay. So your so you want to make sure your cursor is perpendicular to the aortic root long axis and that should be at the level of the sinuses, aortic sinuses, then you can use your M mode. So, so again, the sinus is about right there, so maximum displacement of the left atrium, uh, anterior wall to the posterior wall, and then that's the um, linear. So when you're talking about linear uh, measurement, that is what should be done. So the thing about 
that measure measurement, it's reproducible. It has a high temporal resolution. You can use your M mode, and there's a wealth of published data. However, it's single dimension, not represent, re representative of the actual left atrial size. So there's a lot of inaccuracy. And then this is your two dimensional, again, at the level of the aortic sinuses from the anterior from the anterior wall of the left atrium to the posterior wall. Okay, and this is the so from the so from your leading edge to the leading edge. Okay, so this is your uh, two two dimensional guided linear measurement. Again, it facilitates orientation uh, perpendicular to left atrial posterior wall, and so these are advantages and disadvantages. Um, the area, left atrial area, um, again, you know, it's not a true representation of left atrial size, but uh, if you're going to do it, it is measured in the four chamber apical uh, view at end systole. Uh, that is just one frame uh, prior to the mitral valve opening. Uh, you're going to trace the inner left atrial border, okay, excluding the area on the, so you, you, you stop right there, you stop right there, and then the, you get a, a line that closes the two corners. So you're going to exclude the area under the mitral annulus and the, il, the inlet of the pulmonary veins. So you're going to exclude those. Um, so left atrial area is more more representative of actual left atrial size than li linear measurement, but you know you need uh, for a, a dedicated view to avoid shortening, and it, it again assumes a symmetric shape of the atrium. So the recommend the recommendation is volumetric measurement of the left atrium. So it should be volumetric measurement. And 2D volumetric measurements are based on tracings of the blood tissue interface on the apical four and two chamber view. So this is your four and this is your two, okay? So so, at the, the, so you're gonna trace the border, okay? You're gonna trace the border. So you start from one corner of the mitral annulus, and you trace the border, and you come around to the other corner, and then to close the gap. So the four chamber, the two chamber, okay? Um, so if you're gonna do the, the area length method, remember we said that there are different methods to, 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 to look at left atrial volume, so you can do the, the area length method. The recommended method is the disc summation, however. Okay. Um, so you trace the border, and um, the LA length is defined as the shortest of the two. So if there is the area length method, then you, you, you get the area of the four, the area of the two, and then, you know, the, the you get the length in the four, the length in the two. You're going to get the sh use the shortest of the two. And I'll, I'll show you the calculation, but I don't want you to get confused because that's not the method we are currently using. Um, so the left atrial, the left atrial length, L is the final, the shortest of the two, as, as mentioned. Um, and the, the formula is 0.85 times um, you'll get the area in the four, you get the area in the two. So you're going to multiply area one times area two, and you're going to divide it by the shortest length, and you multiply by 0.85. So the computer will do that for you. So that's the area length method to, to look at left atrial volume. It enables accurate assessment of the asymmetric remodeling of the left atrium. It's more robust uh, predictive cardiovascular events than the linear or area 
measurements alone, but there are limitations. Okay, so so this is the 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 the, the actual calculation. This comes out to 0.85, the area in one times the area in two divided by the shortest length. Okay, so however, the 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 alternative left atrial volume can be calculated by the disk summation. So this is the current recommendation, the disk summation technique. Okay, by adding the volume of a stack of cylinders of height h and area calculated by the orthogonal minor and uh, major transverse uh, axes. So this is a similar method to the one we use for um, LV volume assessment. And you can also do three-dimensional um, assessment uh, of the, uh, the left atrium. So there is no geomet uh, geometrical assumption about left atrial shape. It's more accurate uh, when compared to two-dimensional measurements. And there's still some limitation. But again, if they talk about three-dimensional echo, it is superior in terms of volume assessment than your two-dimensional. So the current recommendations from uh, by the AAC is because it is theoretically more accurate than the area length method, the biplane disk summation technique, which incorporates fewer geometric assumptions, should be the preferred method to measure left atrial volume in clinical practice. The upper normal limit for two-dimensional echo LA volume is 34 ml per meter squared for both genders, okay? So again, I still see people using 28. It is not 28, it is 34. And this is an index volume, mils per meter squared, okay? The method you're going to use is the disk summation, not the area led method. All right, so what about uh, right atrial measurements? I mean, we have to evaluate, when we evaluate the right side, we evaluate the, the right ventricle, we have to evaluate the right atrium. So there are uh, less research and fewer clinical outcome data available on quantification of the right atrium. but we, you know, assessment of the right atrium uh, from different views. Um, we, you know, we can we can look in the, the four chamber view, and when we look at the four chamber view, so it's more of a right sided um, uh, focus view. So you you focus on the, the the right side. Okay, this is the right atrium. So the mind axis of the right atrium should be measured in the apical four chamber view as the distance between the lateral RA wall and the interatrial septum. So you trace the, the, the blood tissue uh, interface and from the mid lateral wall of the right atrium uh, to the uh, into atrial septum right there. So it's gonna be uh, midway between uh, this, um, the, this, this the, the long axis, the right atrium long axis, okay? So midway from the, the lateral wall to this sept septal wall. Okay, and so this, is, this would be your, uh, your, 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 uh, major axis, and this is your minor axis. Okay. And they have some measurements that they give it. Give them. It's easy to obtain. Uh, they're established normal uh, values. Uh, you can also do the, the area of the right atrium. So measured in the apical, again, you're talking about a dedicated or a RV, uh, right-sided focus, Four chamber view, four chamber view, but you you're gonna make the right side more prominent so you can do your evaluation. Okay, um, and then you trace uh, 
only the tricuspid uh, valve. So you go from one corner to one corner, the they, they computer will, will connect the corners with a straight line and your, your, your blood tissue plane, okay? Um, you're gonna exclude the area under the tricuspid annulus and the computer will give you an area. So we used to use this. This is what we used to use, but that's the O5 guidelines. It's more representative of the actual right atrial size than the linear dimension, and there are established norms, but there are problems. Now, the recommendation is to do volumetric assessment on the right atrium. So the current guideline is to do volume assessment, not just the area. So 2D volumetric measurements are usually based on tracings of the blood tissue interface on the apical four chamber view. Apical four chamber view and your, your blood tissue, so right at that interface, you just do, you trace the, the border, okay? At the tricuspid valve level, Okay, the contour is closed by connecting the two opposite section of the tricuspid ring with a straight line. So you, you start from right there, you come right there, the computer will close the line. The, the volumes can be computed by using, uh, you can use either single plane area length, or you can do the disc summation technique. Um, the disc summation technique is probably the the, the better one to use. Um, you can also do 3D assessment on the right, right atrium as, as well. So the current guidelines, especially for people doing exams, is the disc summation technique, looking at the right atrial volume. It's no longer the, 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 the area of the right atrium. Okay, it is more representative of actual right atrium size than linear dimensions and there are problems. You can also do 3D assessment of the um, right atrium. The four chamber of you right atrium is right there. This is your short axis at the level of the aorta then you know this is the right atrium and uh, three-dimensional echo can easily give you a volumetric assessment. So there, there, when you do 3D echo, there is no geometrical assumption. There's uh, some established norms, but you know there are problems, low temporal resolution. It depends on the quality of the image. Um, okay. So the recommended parameter to assess right atrial size is right atrial volume calculated using the single plane area length or the disc summation technique in a dedicated apical uh, four-chamber view. So that's the four-chamber view with an RV focus or a right-sided focus. And the normal range for 2D uh, right atrial volume is 25 plus or minus seven ml per meter square in men. And for females, 21 plus or minus six ml per meter square in females. So you should have an idea of, of the, the measurement. So again, remember that all all these measurements are index. So it's not an absolute uh, size measurement. They are index. Uh, Twenty five plus or minus seven ml per meter squared in men, and twenty one plus minus six in females. So you know they still will give you the RA minor axis. Um, you know. It's, 9 plus or minus 0.3 and the RA uh, major axis. Um, but the, the, the volumetric assessment is, is, is the one you should remember, okay? Because this is current guidelines. These are all this stuff. Um, I am going to leave the, the uh, aortic annulus and aortic root for the next session because this oh, I don't, it, it, we need to spend some time on this because this is uh, something that we should routinely do when we're doing um, 
uh, echoes, and especially in the era of doing TAVR uh, measurement of the, the, the aortic annulus is crucial. So we're going to spend some time on that. So we'll stop here. And as mentioned before,